Welcome to the Happy Homeschooler podcast, a digital support group for everyone interested in a learning lifestyle. I'm your host, Holly. I'm your co-host, Melody. Well, today we're going to be discussing um, summer school for parents. But before we get into what that's all about, um, Melody, let's catch up and see what you've been doing since we last talked. Oh, I've been busy wrapping up the school year and then making some preliminary plans for the fall because I would really have this great idea that I would love to have most things planned out before September when we jump back in again. So it's been a lot of a lot of paperwork and organizing books and pulling things off the shelf. And uh, there are still a few things that I have to stop and think where I put them when we moved into this space from our other house. And so uh, mostly I've been making a big mess <laughs> while, I, while I make these plans. I pull all this stuff out, go through it, sort through it. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I put everything back on the shelf for a break because I had little ones coming over. It's like, I know where that stuff is now. I'll stick it all back. It's all Tetris together. <laughs> and, you know, some books are behind the front row of books. Some books are not where you would expect books to be. But anyway, lots of, lots of brain work, and I, I need a break. What have you been doing? Um, well, we're we're wrapping up the school year, which is exciting. Today, uh, school only took um, a fraction of the amount of time it has been taking. Um, so that was a nice uh, a nice bonus for my son and me when I said, "Yeah, we're done," and he was like, "We're done." Um, and and I've been um, using some things a little more creatively. So. Um, if I leave my son home when I run errands, if I leave him home with his dad, um, he just watches TV, which I don't really find is a good time use. And Or he plays Minecraft, which again, you know, you can only play so much Minecraft or you should only. So I've been making him come with me and he's not been too happy about that. Um, so I grabbed my phone a couple of days ago and I said, hey, let's see if you can do your French lesson while we're doing our errands. And I wasn't sure that I could play YouTube on my phone while I was driving, but and which is where his French, French lessons are right now. But it worked perfectly. So he was working on his French and repeating the things and I was studying with him. Um, I yeah. studied French for in, in um, elementary school all the way through high school. Um, and I've been working on my own study, so we're working together on his. So anyway, I'm trying to be more productive. So we've we've used some technology in ways that um, my my idol Charlotte Mason would never have imagined, but we're still doing <laughs> her type of education. So I've been doing that, and then um, also planning ahead for the new school year, which seems like you know, don't you want to take a break? But like you, I'd like to start off really well prepared um, when we get back to school in the fall and also planning for the summer because uh, we have to have fun um, mm -hmm. during the summer. Kind of leads us into what we're going to talk about today, which is um, how to use the summer for yourself as a parent, you know, maybe to do things you didn't get a chance to do or develop yourself in certain topics. Um, we're getting ready for school for the next year, but I call it summer school for parents. We did talk about this last episode, um, so if you didn't hear any of that, you might want to go back and listen to the episode prior to this one, which is episode 50. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about what the premise is of what summer school for parents could be, and then um, we'll talk more about why and how to do it. So the idea is that we're busy during the school year. You know, we're teaching, we're feeding our kids. Um, we're just trying to keep the house, you know, moderately clean. And we might not have time to spend on our own pursuits or to delve more into things. Have you, did you find that was the case for yourself sometimes when you were um, actively homeschooling, Melody? Well, yes, because I had, I was juggling a lot of tasks. Well, like all, like all homeschooling parents do. Uh, but there were some projects that I knew just had to wait until I had a block of time to focus on them. Uh, most of the time I was preparing a unit ahead while we were all on one unit, or we would just take a break between units so that I could pull together resources. But sometimes it gets a little frustrating when you feel like you're just always, always pressing forward and you don't have a, a moment to like stop and regroup and maybe even like wrap up one thing that you're finishing and really finish it before you 
jump on into the next thing. Sometimes, I don't know, I obviously changed that because we shifted to schooling throughout the year because I wanted some more breaks in between just to prepare for the next thing that was coming up. But, but yes, there's so much to do. And moms or parents have so many demands on them because, like you said before, you're trying to feed everybody and keep them clothed in moderately clean clothes and, <laughs> you know, keep your house in some sort of order so you can find things. And and then those aren't the only demands on your time. There are those outside of the house things. You've got to be here at a certain time or be there. And there's just parents are busy people. <laughs> and, and many home educators also work full or part time. Right. So, yeah, it's a lot in a day. And I know that um, when I came up with this idea, um, I wrote an article about this in May 2011 for the Texas Homeschool Coalition's magazine um, that was called The Review at the time. And what I found for myself is during the busyness of the school year and preparing lessons and teaching lessons and working and all that, um, I didn't really have time to do anything more substantial than maybe glance through a magazine or, um, you know, I didn't have time to add any enriching activities for myself. And I started to feel kind of dull and uninteresting and unmotivated. So I came up with the idea of using the summer as a way to do some things that really fed and nurtured me as a person, things that I was particularly interested in. Nobody in my family is interested in learning French. Um, and my kids, I, I taught all my kids some French and none of them really felt really passionate about it, but I do. Um, I also really wanted to learn a lot more about art than I knew. I, I'm very uh, familiar with the Impressionists, but not familiar with many other art periods. And I wanted to learn more about art so I could appreciate art, so I could help uh, my kids understand art more. And just, you know, for my overall development as a person to be a well-rounded, well-educated person. And so that kind of is how I got to that point. And also, you know, I don't guess I can ever say anything without bringing Charlotte Mason into it. But Charlotte Mason um, had this concept called mother culture. We could call it parent culture. I was just culture. about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Charlotte so Mason, we call that mother culture. Share, share with our listeners what that encompasses, please. Well, in a nutshell, at least the way I think about it, is just basically realizing that you need to take some time to develop your own interests. And um, I know she, one of her recommendations was to have several books going, uh, light reading and maybe something technical or something you're learning, and then something that's, that's really in-depth that you've got to, for me, it's those books like, and everything needs to stop, and don't talk to me while I'm studying this, because I'm wanting to learn something challenging. But she, she did talk about being sure that we challenge ourselves and then have some recreation, and then have some way to maybe just further develop the skills that you use all the time. Indeed, and I know that um, one of the things you enjoy doing is uh, crocheting. I love to crochet. Anything right. with yarn and thread and, right. Yeah. So that was one of the way, that was one of those things that I did to keep myself from just becoming a nut, because I had <laughs> some kind of creative outlet that was satisfying and somehow, you know, like just deeply nourishing in some ways. Also, for the crochet, those were little projects that I could actually finish because nothing else ever was finished. The laundry's <laughs> never finished. The oh, cleaning's sure. never finished. The schooling goes on and on. It's like I needed some small task that I could start and do and finish and have yeah. some accomplishment. Not that other things. I mean, you get to the end of a lesson or you get to the end of a book, and there are other little accomplishments that we celebrate all the time. But, sure. but basically it was one of those, a need for something creative. And mm -hmm. writing is that for me, although I don't do creative writing, but I've always written. And when I was going to uh, find my article, Summer School for Parents, I have a whole collection of articles I've been writing since probably around 2000. And I've written for various homeschool publications, not just in Texas, but in Pennsylvania um, and in Illinois and some other places. And I, and I do content writing now um, for Transcript Maker for their blog. And I've done content writing for some other um, entities. But for me, that is a, a thing. It's purely for myself that I really enjoy doing. It's like, oh, you paid me to write this. This is so cool. Um, well, you yeah. created something. I mean, it's, right. it's definitely creative, even if you don't think of it as creative writing. Right. But you're 
creating an article out of nothing, right. basically. And and I think that's really important. Um, all you homeschool educators that are listening to us, it's really important that you have those things for yourself and that you take time for yourself. But as we all know, in the crunch of a school year, it's harder to do. So summer can be a nice gift for you where you do something for yourself. I've started doing watercolor painting. Um, I'm really enjoying it. And so I plan to try to do that once a week. Uh, just because when I do it, I just feel so relaxed and it's just something for myself. Um, and I just really enjoy it. So that's the whole idea of summer school for parents. You know, take the summer, plan it out just like you do for your own kids, that you have things for yourself, um, that you have things that nourish you mentally, you know, physically, spiritually, if that's where you, you know, find some refreshment. But, you know, as much as you give out, if you don't put something back in, your well's going to run dry. That's so true. And I'm glad you mentioned planning. And it doesn't have to be something rigid, but we all know how quickly summer can fly by. Oh, for sure. And so if you stop and think, okay, you know, in June, I'd like to do this. And in July, this is coming up. And I mean, just kind of plot a little course of things that you want to do for some some seasons, it was like a list of things I wanted. Sometimes it's projects, things I want to get done. But those have their own reward for me. I found it really satisfying to get those things done. Then they're not, you know, hanging over my head when we get mm -hmm. back into school that something was left unfinished. But mm -hmm. just an idea, like map out a little plan so that you can either make arrangements or find funds or find things to do before you turn around twice and it's September. Oh, for sure. My And my son, who's eight, has said to me recently in the past few days, how can it be, like yesterday, he said, how can it be five o'clock already? I said, I <laughs> do not know. And that's how the summer goes, right? You go, yes. oh, you know, we're done with school. If you have a traditional school year, as I, as I generally do, I think I might try a year round and then I get to the end of the school year. I'm like, no, I need a break. So mm -hmm. anyway, but you know, you, you say, oh, great. You know, you moved on to the next grade, good school year. And then you blink and it's like late August or September. And like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Where yeah. Does oh. Go? oh yeah. And I know that happened to me the first few years that I homeschooled. Cause I just wasn't thinking, I just hadn't thought about it in that way. But um, in the beginning we, we did, you know, sit, First, some um, first Monday, first Tuesday after Labor Day, we would start, and then we mm -hmm. would go till you know Memorial Day, that traditional little those bookends, and then mm -hmm. um, we would take a break. But I did learn like before I take a break, I need to like wrap up what we're doing and evaluate some of what this year, where are we, where do we want to, what changes do we need to make, where right, where are we like headed? we talked about last episode <clears throat> about how to right um, take stock, mm -hmm. and then. Um, that would happen. It was like, I felt like summer, summer seems like it's going to stretch on and on and on for days and days. And then it's over. <laughs> I know. I know. So I am, um, I would really encourage everyone listening to us today to sit down and think about what would you like to do? What would you, what did you want to do this school year for yourself? You didn't have time to do. What do you want to make time to learn? What things are your passions? And set some time up this summer for you, for your interests. And, um, you know, your kids will be inspired, too. I think when our kids see us taking time for ourselves to learn things, that helps them to understand, hey, this is important. You know, oh, yeah. um, it, we're modeling Look. something for them and giving ourselves a reward. Um, another reason that it's so important is because it'll help you avoid burnout. Because if we only do, you know, just the educational part of our life and we never do anything else that develops the rest of who we are, we get really, um, well, we just burn out. We get tired, we get dull, we get in a rut, and we need to expand our interests a little bit. And, be that model of learning for our kids and it refreshes us and just helps us to be, it helps you be a better parent. It, yeah, it helps you be an overall better person, you know, a better partner. I, mm -hmm. I've been burned out and I'm sure you have. And you just kind of, you just kind of have 
a real survival mentality and there's no joy, you know, and if you're feeling like that, it's probably because you're, you're burning out. You're mm -hmm. not giving yourself those things that refresh and, and renew and invigorate you. Um, well, so I think sometimes we, we feel, we do feel pressure to finish the, you know, either finish by a certain time or we've got to finish this book. And sometimes that we let that pressure get in the way of realizing that it's important to take some time for breaks and rest and development so that you can end strong and not just fizzle out at the end. But the other thing is sometimes, you know, if you, sometimes you can quit. You don't have to actually finish all the books. Sometimes if your family needs a break, you can hit pause Mm -hmm. and take a break and then you can come back and finish those later after everybody's gotten a little bit of of a break from from stuff or in our case like there were times where there other outside things occurred that needed to be taken care of and trying to do everything like you mentioned survival mode that's exactly what it felt like and it's like oh i just can't you can't just keep pushing yourself yeah i know when i'm in survival mode when i start to get kind of cranky um, mm -hmm. when everything starts to irritate me and I just feel frustrated with things that shouldn't frustrate me at all. Uh, and then I realize I haven't spent enough time. Uh, maybe I didn't get enough sleep over many, you know, too many nights and I, I didn't take time to read. I, I realized, um, I think last summer that I wasn't spending much time reading and I decided to change that. And, you know, it's interesting how much just taking time 10 or 15 minutes a day to read will help you to avoid feeling burned out like you. I feel like sometimes my my analogy is a hamster on a wheel. I just feel like I'm running, 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 running and spinning my wheels, you know, because I'm, I'm on that go merry go round. Do this, do that, do the next thing. And there's nothing joyful in the middle of it. So um, that's really important to make time for that, um, even that 10 or 15 minutes. But the summer is a great time to really give yourself some extra time to delve into those things and, and refresh yourself. We're going to take a short break to hear a word from our sponsor. When we get back, we'll talk about planning your own personal summer school. This episode is sponsored by Transcript Maker. Transcript Maker is an online service that allows you to create professional high school transcripts in the comfort of your own home. And you know, Melody, part of growing as a parent or an educator or even just a person is making time. And a great way to make time for your own self-development is outsourcing those time-consuming tasks like creating high school transcripts. Oh, that's the truth because it does take a long time. I mean, it's a good thing I like math because here I was with paper and pencil and my spreadsheet and doing all the calculations. And sometimes it was a little bit frustrating when I wanted to wait a course and figure out how to how to do that for the honors courses was like I'm I'm glad those days are over for me oh for sure um there are some uh articles on the transcript maker website that explain how to do that and yuck I didn't want to do that and excel <laughs> is super confusing I was so thrilled and, and I'll say it every time I was so thrilled when I found transcript maker and I didn't have to try to do that on my own our listeners can be thrilled that Transcript Maker offers a 14-day free trial, so you can give it a test drive and see what it's all about before you make a commitment. That's at www.transcriptmaker.com. And when you're ready to subscribe, we have a special code you can use that will give you 20% off your subscription. Just type in the word HAPPY, H-A-P-P-Y in all caps. Transcript Maker. Simply better transcripts. Welcome back to the show. In the first half, we talked about how important it is to commit to your own self-development and why you should do it. And now in this half, we're going to talk about what to do and how to do it. Melody, um, have you had some experience in, in setting up a summer learning program for yourself? Oh, a little bit, because uh, it seems like I make a lot of plans and I don't get very far in them before something happens to derail my plan. but uh, you get a whole lot more done if you have a plan than if you don't have any idea at all. So one summer I had a stack of books I wanted to read through and uh, I would just pick them up here and there throughout the day because, you know, everybody was busy doing all kinds of things and we were running 
um, to different classes and community type activities with the kids that this one particular summer. Some were for fun. I was reading through a series that my mother was also reading and some were kind of technical teaching things that I was curious about and some were just, you know, purely fiction just because I found the book and it looked appealing. But I have had a list of books. Sometimes I um, was watching the library. Our library would host some authors to come. I think that program might not have started in the summer, but they had some events and I would go and try to just expand a little bit, get out in the community and learn something new with sure. some new friends. So would you say that you sat down and wrote out like what you wanted to do? You you set up some priorities? Oh, I did. I mm -hmm. am a list maker. And so, yes, I had a, a little list of things I wanted to do. I also had some things I wanted the kids to do, too. Mm -hmm. And so we would have our, our, you know, summer of learning things together. But, yes, I make a list. I make lists all the time. <laughs> Big list maker. How you and I are the same like, in that. Yes. Also, you know, like about this time of the year, we start getting little flyers about summer, like the summer movie theater. Pro, our movie theater does summer movies. And so, you know, I've got my calendar out and I'm marking down some possible fun things that the family might want to do. And then I'm also slotting in some other activities for me to do. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's like, this is when I can stop and take a little trip to see someone that I haven't seen in a while or make arrangements for someone to see us or just, um, you know, get a feel for what's going on in the community. There are always a lot of activities in the summer. Right. And if you don't set your priorities, you can get sucked into all kinds of things and it might not necessarily be the things you really wanted to do. And so I think it is important for everyone who's uh, going to use the summer for their self-development to sit down, like you said, and make a list. So for example, I want to work on watercolors and, um, and I'm going to write down on my calendar a time every day, uh, like once a week or something. And I'm going to post it on my calendar, the big calendar everybody sees so that they can see that mom has something she's going to be doing. Um, That's a good idea. It's yeah. a, you're making an appointment with yourself mm -hmm. and exactly. put it in your planner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that everybody, you know, everybody should do that. Even if your priority is you want to go, we're fortunate here that we have a lot of um, rivers and things that you can get into and, and enjoy in the summer. So, you know, one of my priorities is going to be going down to the river. Um, and I'm going to put that on the calendar because I don't want it to get crowded out by other things. So I would encourage all of you parent educators to um, sit down and make a list. You know, maybe you and your partner didn't get to have very many date nights. That's a nice thing to put on your calendar. Put that on mm -hmm. your calendar. Maybe you wanted to attend um, a lecture series or something and it's coming up, put, put it on your calendar because you're important. Your needs are important enough to write them down. And that teaches your family, you know, as much as you respect and give time for them to do things. We have park days on the calendar for my son. Mm -hmm. uh, we have other things on the calendar for other people that uh, every person in the family, the prior, they get a priority of something that's for them to do. And everybody can see that and, and respect that. So right. your well, and if I didn't put it on the calendar, then I would, you know, get busy and forget that this was the day that the symphony was going to put on. You know, we have that little symphony in the park mm -hmm. in Austin. Well, if that's not on the calendar, that requires some travel time and some arrangements. You don't these kind of things just sneak up on you if you don't have them. Right. And you there we your... can see them. Yeah. And, you know, uh, one of the things I say about that, so I, I have a paper calendar so everyone in the house can look at it. And then I also have my uh, Google calendar on my phone. And so I have started putting everybody's appointments into my Google calendar. And the great thing about that is if I'm out and about and I see something interesting, I can look and right away I can know, oh, can we do this? Oh, yeah. You know, and also you can invite people to your calendar. So say that maybe I would I would love to plan something to do with you this summer because we haven't seen each other much. You know, we can plan an activity and put it and invite the person to our our event. 
so that it's on everybody's calendar and you can set reminders because we're busy. I need mm-hmm. reminders. I mean, I don't know about these people who keep everything in their head. I'm not that person. So I have reminders that pop up, you know, of, uh, you can choose. Do you want to be reminded a week ahead, a day ahead, 10 minutes ahead? But all set, of the reminders. I, yeah, I want them all. <laughs> all of them. But, you know, so set your priorities, plug it into your calendar, put it in your phones if you're out and about. And somebody asks you if you can participate in something, you'll be able to know. You won't have to go mm-hmm. home and then you forgot. Oh, I forgot. I was going to check my calendar. Then this great opportunity passed you by. You know, use right. what I tell my husband all the time is use the tools of technology at your disposal. Right. Uh, we live in the future, so we should use those wonderful tools that we have. I only just started using the calendar in my phone because I am for many t- years, you know, Paper has served me well, and I still like having that as a redundant system so that the wall calendar, everybody can see. I have a planner, but I also start putting things in my phone because my phone will, you know, pop up in a little alarm and let me know. Mm-hmm. And just yesterday, I added a, a webinar about um, herbal um, and making herbal salves or something like that. It's oh. an area of interest to me. And it's like, oh, I'm very interested to hear what Rosemary Gladstar has to say about that. So I just popped it in my Counter, you'd be so proud of me on my phone, and I, I haven't so even put it. <laughs> I haven't even put it down on paper yet, so I probably got to do that. But it's a good way to, you know, people are offering things to do, learning activities for oh, okay. everyone. So part of the reason why sometimes we don't take time for ourselves is maybe uh, we think it's going to cost too much money, or we don't know where these things are. So how do we how do we make sure that once we've set our priorities, how do we carry them out? And that's the you know, that's the thing I, I think we should talk about next. So you you found somebody had an herb making class. Where's that class? Oh, it's online. Online. It's a webinar. And I used to not sign up for webinars because they were so easy to forget um, if I didn't use my calendar and set a reminder. So now when I see something like that, that that lines up with something that's a, an interest or, like you said, a priority. I write it in my planner, and like I said, I put that one in my phone, and I write it on the wall calendar. It's like I just have learned that if things are going to happen, they've got to be planned for and arranged for. So it's like, okay, I'm not available for this 30 minutes or an hour because I'm taking this class. And then I usually try to take some notes and actually you know, pay attention and treat it with the value that it is giving me to Mm -hmm. be able to like i need to take some notes there's no point in just sitting here listening if i'm not going to learn something that's probably just my personality i remember things better if i write it down i feel that same way because i think um if you go back to we had an episode about how people learn best and um you know the more layers of senses you involve the more you'll learn something so if you're listening, you learn only so much. If you're writing and listening, you learn so much. If you're writing and listening and watching, you know, the more senses that get involved, the more what you're learning is cemented into right. your, um, your brain. Well, so, and this time I have like an action step afterwards because oh. I bought some herbs. I was going to make a salve last summer. It never actually happened. So it's like, OK, I'm taking this class and then I'm going to do that activity. Oh, and I already fun. marked out some time. It's like, I'm going to do that on Friday, so I won't be available. <laughs> oh, cool. That sounds cool. I, I I'll let you to... know if it works out. Yeah, oh. yeah. I might have to, to get in on some of that because um, I love I love natural um, healing things. So online classes are widely available and apps. Um, so online classes, one of the ones that I've been enjoying is uh, Let's Make Art, which is Mainly about Sarah watercolor paint. Yes. Sarah Gray. Yeah, she's adorable. And how generous are they? Their tutorials, their video tutorials are free. And the templates for a lot of the art is free. And you just have to buy the supplies. And oh my goodness. And I bought Crayola watercolor paints and started. You know, I'm going to upgrade, but I've been getting some incredible. That's um, amazing. They're creation. wonderful. Mm-hmm. So I dug my watercolors out from college because I had an art class then, and they're still good. But they're not the quality she's using. But like you said, still, 
the result, just learning techniques, learning mm -hmm. from a master, learning from someone who loves what they're doing. Yes. So um, if you can't get out of the house or you don't want to get out of the house because you're still not feeling comfy with the whole uh, COVID thing, you know, you got online classes. Now, when I do my art class, I make dinner a little early that day because um, I do it with some friends. That's another fun thing is, you know what? You can invite your friends to do this summer school stuff with you. So if you know some like-minded yes. friends who who like to do art, you could say like some some ladies in my church, we get together once a month and do let's make art together at seven o'clock. And, um, you know, we we get all our supplies and we have a, a Zoom chat going on and we've got the tutorial and we're painting. We're having a glass of wine. We're hanging out. So I make dinner early for my family on those days. And oh my gosh, and it's super fun. And, uh, and we take a group picture at the end. We all show our <laughs> pictures. It's the most fun thing. And um, and so, you know, um, in order to get that time for myself, as I was just saying to my son earlier, boy, parents have to work hard just to get some time. So I'm going out this evening. I have to make sure I feed my family before I get to leave the house. But it's worth it because then I'm going to go out and be gone for several hours hanging out. So, you know, may, when you're making your plan, setting your priorities, you need to plan also what do you have to do with your family <laughs> so you can have this time? So, you know, I make right. sure that, like, I have a really nice snack for my family. Hey, here's your dinner and this is your snack. I'm not going to be available for an hour. Um, so, you know, there's plenty of online classes. Um, there are apps. I use Duolingo for my French. And what I love about Duolingo is, um, especially lately, I've been having to take my husband to, like, doctor appointments or take somebody somewhere where I have to wait on them. I'll just open my app and study my my French. Um, also, like if you if you do feel comfortable and you want to get out and about and do some of the activities in your community, there's um, park bands in the park or theater groups are doing things. Uh, bookstores are offering activities. Well, reading clubs for the kids, and I've seen some for the adults. And then our library always has a big. Uh, promotion, or you could audit a class at your local university if you live near one, um, or the sports leagues. I've seen some sports leagues starting back up a little bit. So if that's your jam, you can go and find things to do out and about in the community. Yeah, we just, um, actually, my son and I went to um, a local arts center in the town nearby us. Um, we had seen some information about them when we were studying um, about artists display their work as part of our art lesson this past week. So we actually went to the art center and we, we were given a tour of the art center by the owner and they have oh. um, music. They, they're very, it's a varied art center. So they have plays, they have musical performances, they have um, art of all kinds um, and they have art displayed and you can have a silent auction or just purchase outright. So we went down there and they have things going on all summer. And um, the past that couple so years, cool. it is cool. it was a really neat place. And I, I plan to support it. Um, they have been doing a great job of bringing art to our community. Um, and then um, our library the past few years has had an adult summer reading program. And the prizes have been pretty cool. Um, so... You know, prizes? How about? <laughs> yeah, like I think prizes. one of the prizes was a bottle of wine and another, they were some passes to uh, maybe a restaurant. I don't know. It was pretty cool. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, about time that grown ups should get, <laughs> get to join in. Rewarded on some for of reading, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so many ways to develop yourself at so many price points, right? Right. Well, and then, too, I think we could mention if you can't find something out there that you want to go to, just host something at your, um, you know, at your own home. If you have a group of friends and you want to do something together, like a mother culture night or, mm -hmm. or a family night, just to get something something going. Um, so what are your what are your plans for your summer school this summer? Yeah, so. Um, this summer, I want to learn some more about some different periods of art. Um, we study three artists and three composers every school year. 
And so I'm going to take some time to learn about the different art periods that our artists will be covering. Um, and I'm going to learn a little bit more about our composers. So those are two things. I'm going to keep working on my French. I really want to get back to being fairly fluent. I was pretty fluent when I was in high school, uh, where I grew up in, in Ohio, in northeastern Ohio. But then I moved to Texas. Well, you can run into French speakers in Ohio because a lot okay. of Canadians come down. But oh, there aren't so many. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. Not so many French speakers in Texas unless you join uh, the Alliance Francaise, which I'd like to do at some point. Um, so anyway, I'm working really hard on my French and, and teaching my son. But yeah, that's what I'm going to work on. And just doing more reading. I really hadn't been reading as much as I would like to. I'm, I'm reading a series um, called The Number One Ladies Detective Agency. So I'm collecting the books I can, can start from number one and read. I'll read all the way. That sounds yeah. like fun. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to a fun summer, um, getting in the water and working on my own self-development. What about you? What's on your agenda this summer? Well, I'm going to, um, I still have my craft snowball going. I don't know. That was several episodes ago, and I mentioned that I was finishing up a lot of things. But in the meantime, I've started a whole bunch more, and so now I've got my snowball. <laughs> Snowballing. I've got all these things. Lots of things in the works. I'm wanting to like spend some time, some downtime, just doing some of those arts and crafts and crochet projects that I wanted to do and some sewing because I haven't, my sewing machine has got some dust on it, which tells me it's been a while since I pulled it out and got some things done, but that's something I really enjoy doing. And then um, I signed up for a class about writing patterns because I have some things I thought I might put out there to sell or Maybe get some of the, I talked before about putting some of my uh, printables up on Teachers Pay Teachers, and I haven't mm -hmm. done that yet either. So I've just got some little things I want to wrap up, and then we're, uh, I'm looking at going through and kind of decluttering and minimizing a little bit. Not that I'm a minimalist, but I would like to revisit some of my bookshelves and just see if everything on the shelf is really um, adding value. Does I, do I need to keep those things? I'm in a different moving into a different season of life mm -hmm. and I probably don't need to keep everything I've collected over the last however many years but the things I keep going back to they were in their place on my shelf and I'll, they'll stay there but there are some things where I think someone gave us a box of books because here are your homeschoolers and um, I don't use those so I need to pass them on to somebody who might and, sure, um, that makes sense. I'm just looking to, I really need some, um, just a break from a very busy, busy year. And I need to just get this, like the reading. I want to do some reading and some things I need to to write and finish up. Kind of a, a wrap up and gear up for the next fall. But first I need to take a little break. Here at the end of our episode, we're debuting our new segment, The Reading Nook where we're going to talk about the books we've been reading. Uh, so, Melody, what have you been reading? Oh, well, I just picked up, like a couple of days ago, The Lazy Genius Way. I saw someone mention this in a teacher group that I'm in, and it just really piqued my curiosity, and I looked up a little bit more about it. And the subtitle is a pretty good summary of what she's talking about. Embrace what matters, ditch what doesn't, and get stuff done. And so I, uh, I only just started reading it. But so far, I've been real tickled because it's like if I was going to write down what I've been doing to get stuff done, this is what I would be saying. <laughs> and this is really good about, you know, start small, uh, decide what matters. I think that's the main thing. Decide what matters. And so she's saying, you know, be a genius about what matters and lazy about what doesn't. So I like kind that. Of like, Who's the author? Uh, the book? author is Kendra Adachi. And I found out that she's got a podcast and a website. That she's brand new to me. But this book, I think, must be the copyright is 2020. So the book is new, but her podcast has been out for a while. So it makes me want to know a little bit more. But she's very fun to read and uh, just a real, it's just like sitting down with your friend, just a real mom, and talking about getting things done because, you know, sometimes there are a lot of things we feel like we should be doing. Uh -huh. And so it's kind of like we talked about earlier, what's important to you, set your priorities. And so 
what does it mean? What does living well mean for you personally? It's a little bit different for each person. So I'm only like one or two chapters in. It's really good. I'm looking forward to reading the rest. Yeah, that book sounds cool. I think I'm going to have to get that. Um, I have been reading a book called French Kids Eat Everything by Karen Le Billon. And she is a Canadian who married a Frenchman. And she and her husband had two children. And he was very um, unhappy with the way that their children ate. They only wanted to eat certain foods. And they they just weren't, uh, they didn't have a very expanded palate. Okay. And uh, French children eat everything. As it, as it comes out in the book, and it's very fascinating, uh, French children are taught by their culture and in their schools to appreciate all kinds of food. And they start by doing things such as pureeing beets or pureeing asparagus or something and giving it to the child. And then um, at a later time, they'll offer that same food, but it'll be actually in its whole form or in another form, maybe steamed or roasted. And they, they um, expose children to all kinds of foods. And French children eat a wide variety of foods. They eat them happily. And that is not the experience of many North American families. And it, and it wasn't my experience with my youngest son. We'd gotten into some poor eating habits. And I have taken some of the ideas from this book and some ideas from a Facebook group I was on. And I have overhauled some things we do with our eating. One of the things, and, and I'm sure you and I were raised this way, is you didn't eat between meals. No. You know, we got breakfast. And if you were hungry, my mom would be like, great, you'll really enjoy your lunch when I serve it to you in, you know, three hours. And then you had you had your uh, your lunch and you maybe had an afternoon snack for us. It was usually fruit. We could eat fruit or some veggies. And then you had your meal. Um, and like maybe once a week on Sunday, there was a dessert and you ate the food and you might not have liked all of it, but you were hungry. And so one of the premises is that, you know, stop giving your kids snacks. Because it's ruining their meals, which my mom used to say, you're going to ruin your dinner. Can't have well, that. you do. Your dinner. Yeah. Because you so, don't get a chance to finish digesting what you ate for breakfast because you want right, something else in there. Right. So I highly recommend French kids eat everything. Um, if you aren't happy with how your meal times are going, if, you're, if you've gotten into the short order cook route, um, I have changed and I'm part of the one meal club now. I make one dinner. I usually include something that I know my son will like to eat. But I have been so surprised at the things he's decided to eat after changing some of the stuff I'm doing. And really, it has taken very little time. It's been a couple weeks I've been working on this. And he ate Indian food the other night willingly love with vegetables that. in it. I'm thrilled. I would love to know what our listeners are reading. Um, I'm always looking for another book to add to my stack and more information to learn or something amusing to do. So uh, you can send us email to happyhomeschoolpod at gmail.com. Or follow us on Twitter at underscore homeschoolpod. Visit us on Facebook and Instagram at happyhomeschoolpod. And you can find the Happy Homeschooler podcast on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Holly. I'm Melody. Happy, Happy homeschooling. homeschooling. Hi, this is your host, Holly williams Zerbaum. Thank you for listening to the Happy Homeschooler podcast, a transcript maker production. My co-host is Melody Gillum. This episode was produced by Matthew Bass and edited by Nora Williams. Our graphic design is by Pete Soloway, and our music is by The Great Pangolin. You can find her music on YouTube and Twitter at Kylie Wins. That's K-A-I-L-E-Y wins. If you'd like to help our podcast grow, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or as always, tell people about us. And don't forget, when you're ready to subscribe, we have a special 20% off uh, discount. Let me try that again. And don't forget, when you're ready to just... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs>